looking at my desk, it's a little crazy right now. <laughs> there are a lot of cu cutting utensils here. And that is what we're going to focus on today. We talked about adhesives. We talked about styles. This time, Back to the Basics is focusing on cutting utensils. Now, if you're working with paper and you've decided on your style and you would love to buy your own collection of paper or whatever you decide to do, you need something to cut that paper with. We already have the adhesive. We talked about getting a double-sided tape and maybe a glue. But now we got to talk about how to cut the paper that we're going to use. You can always, always go and get yourself a good pair of long scissors. But you better be okay with not having a straight line. Because no matter how much you may draw a straight line, your scissor is going to do wonky things and not cut in a straight line. That's just life. I'm sorry. Unless you have the most steady hand in the entire world, it. I don't know how you can do it. Don't know how you're going to do it. So, you'd need to get a trimmer. So, let's go over these and why I have these specific items later. Let's talk about trimmers because there's several different kinds that are on the market. And there's definitely different companies and different styles and what they like to see in a trimmer. The most popular trimmer that I see is actually from Fiskars. And you can get it at Joann relatively treat. And Joann has 40% off one item or 50% off one item or you can hit another sale, all those kinds of things. So they're actually having a sale and I'm talking to you about it right now. The trimmer that I see most often is the Fiskars 12 inch paper trimmer. Now it looks similar to this, but there's a major difference. Okay, this is the trimmer that I usually see. Right now, where I live, um, it is $20.29, regular price $29. So if you look at this, the base of this trimmer looks similar to this one. It is smaller base-wise. This one goes to 4 inches, while this one goes to, it looks like, about 3 it has the same function on the arm, where the arm pulls out and it's going to have measurements going across. But the major difference in the key is the type of trimmer this is. This right here is a blade. I'm trying to see if you can get a better... See how it's a blade? Okay, so what happens is there's a housing unit. That's that orange piece that has this little sharp little blade. And those blades wear out over time. In addition, when you're cutting with that type of trimmer, this is the blade, 839 for two. I don't know if you can see here. There's a little bitty blade underneath there, but the orange part is the housing mechanism. What happens is you have to start in the middle of your paper and work up and then work back. In addition, when your blade gets dull and it gets dull quickly, you have to replace it. So it's about four bucks per blade for that trimmer. So yes, you have a small upfront cost of $28, where you probably, if you're scrapbooking every day, need to change your blade monthly, maybe every two months, and spend four bucks every two months on a new blade. So I started with that trimmer because it was the cheapest at the time and I wasn't really big into scrapbooking when I first started. But I discovered quickly that I was running through those trimmer blades super quick. So I researched and tried to find what else, what, are, what other options are there even? And that's where I landed on rotary style blades. Now, I believe Creative Memories or Close to My Art also has a rotary style blade. And what that means is if you're going into sewing, the blade is circular. And what happens is while I push this blade 
down, it rotates and cuts the paper. So instead of a little nub like this going back and forth, it does not wear down as quickly. I can have the same blade for six months compared to, I don't know, every two months. I really like this trimmer. My, I have two complaints though. Two complaints about this trimmer. Um, let's, let me give you a price point here just so you can compare. It honestly isn't that bad. So normally it is $34 and on sale for 23. So the sale price is the same price as that other trimmer. Mm, $3 more than that other trimmer. So it really isn't much different. Um, I've had that one. I got tired of it because this part was engraved instead of a sticker. And you're missing a vital, like three and a half wasn't there on the trimmer. Whereas this one I upgraded. So I just got a bigger base. That's all I did on this one. It's the same trimmer, same thing. Two things that I don't like about this trimmer. It's not square. And you're missing the five and a quarter on this specific trimmer. This trimmer, again, it's not square. So you have to shift your paper a little bit if you're cutting on a line. But that is easy enough to determine where to shift. Uh, and then you're missing a vital three and a half. So, but you're going to find that with a lot of trimmers, including this new Tim Holtz tonic trimmer. This is, again, a rotary blade. I cannot take it out of the case. Um, Tim says he hasn't replaced this blade in a year. I've had this trimmer for, I don't know, two weeks and played with it four times. <laughs> so this is really, really a new product to me. Um, it is pricey. So this trimmer is retailing for $100 right now. I got it on sale. Um, but I also scrap a daily. So I justified the fact that I scrapbook daily and that I'm upset about this trimmer not being square and Fiskars isn't going to change anything about it. It's like a defect with the arm. So I got this one because it's a rotary blade. He said he hadn't changed this blade with this casing thing. You have to replace the whole deagle. Um, and it's $15 for this, but $15 every year compared to this one every six months. You know. <laughs> um, also, I liked the fact that this has quarter inch marks. So, I don't know if you can see the texture here. It also tells you where two and three fifths is. Three and a, three by five, four by six, four and a quarter by five and a half. The different measurements on here and it goes to six inches here I love that it's a big base and the arms fold out on both sides my major complaint about trimmers is that I'm having to cut upside down so I can see the numbers and the numbers are upside down I'm finding that I'm still doing the same thing. The numbers are upside down for me. However, I can eventually learn maybe to go this way. <laughs> so that my numbers are going this way. Um, I've really enjoyed this so far. It's cut thick stuff for me. Uh, I haven't tried super thick yet. I don't want to break it two weeks in. So I haven't tried that. Um... On this trimmer, it's really clearly easy to see where things are going to cut. It's not so easy where to see things are going to cut here. What I mean by that is this clear plastic is very deceiving on where it's actually going to cut. It's going to cut along this metal piece that's very sharp. So you kind of have to lean in and do the things to try to figure out because this bar is in the way. That's my only complaint about this trimmer so far. It's very sharp and it cuts square, which makes me really, really, really happy. 
But for beginners, even though your typical 12 inch trimmer here is cheaper by $3 on sale, go with your rotary blade trimmer. Your blades last longer and you don't have to worry about paper fraying. That's what happens with these types of trimmers. I always recommend a rotary blade. Just do. Now, this is called a guillotine trimmer. It looks like you could chop your fingers off. So you do have to be careful. Um, if I did this, I, it's not sharp here. What it does is it uses the two blades coming together like scissors to cut the paper. I have this one around for smaller cuts. So say I just want to cut a scrap piece of paper that's about yay big in half, I can pull this out a lot easier than I can pull this out and get a half inch cut. So that's why I have it. I have it hanging just like this. I've got a little tab. This tab did not come with it. I just hang it by the tab. So that's why I have this one. It's also a lot more portable. This is hard to cut straight lines with though. And you may have experienced that if you were in a school setting ever and they had the those big guillotine trimmers. You had to be really careful about. What happens is the paper kind of bends around this edge. So you have to be very cognizant about where you place it and make sure you're holding that paper down but still you don't get a straight cut. So I do not recommend these for, be for beginners. I recommend a rotary blade, but get what fits in your budget, what size you're gonna work with. That trimmer there was too small to even work with 12 by 12. These will work with 12 by 12. This is really pricey. Okay, let's talk about scissors. Scissors and all these other things, okay? The only pair of scissors you really need is the big one, okay? This big one is fantastic. I think I got it at Walmart for super cheap in the sewing section. You do want to get sewing scissors. For whatever reason, they make them sharper than your normal paper scissors. And it might have something to do with the fact that you're cutting fabric, okay? So get a pair of sewing scissors that are big. Those are the two items you have to have in your craft room, a trimmer and sewing scissors. The reason I have these smaller ones is a couple different reasons, okay? These two are for detail cutting. So what I mean by that is say I have an image like this one right here and I want to cut it out. These scissors make it super easy to cut this image as super close as I want to. They're nice and sharp and they're small so they can get kind of in the crevices. Like if I keep going, I'm just going to do this really hard part here. I can just keep on going and I can see around it. Okay, I got really close into there. It's not perfect and that's okay. That's why I have these. These same thing. I thought I was gonna try to replace this with these. Second night, I'm not a huge fan. Um, yes, I can get really far in there. However, the shortness of the blade doesn't, I have to like increase my cutting more instead of doing one continuous path but it does its job it is supposed to be literally a detail cutter but when I read the description it said four inches and I did not realize it meant from blade tip to handle tip four inches I thought it was talking about blade is four inches so it is what it is I'm gonna keep these around for a little bit just to see if I end up liking them so far not a huge fan these are by Cricut. 
And Cricket makes cutters too. So instead of going Fiskars, which does have a lifetime warranty, you could go Cricket and they've got pretty much a whole set of everything you need. They've got um, scissors, trimmer, tweezers, this thing. Like other things that you don't need, but if you want to get a pack of something, you can go with Cricket. I've seen them at Hobby Lobby. You can do the same thing. It's a little bit harder with a larger scissors to get really in to those crevices, but you can do it. Just to kind of give you an example, I just want to cut all of this out. I actually think I probably did a better job with the bigger scissors. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <coughs> but I was able to cut this out with a couple different pairs of scissors. But I recommend this. The only reason I have this pair is because they're supposed to be nonstick. These are titanium, I think, or something, but they're supposed to be nonstick and it specifically says nonstick. Eh, depends on the adhesive, <laughs> honestly. Um, I just keep them around because now they're my junk scissors. And I use them for adhesive only. I don't use this or this one with adhesive. So get yourself a pair of scissors and a rotary trimmer. Those are two things. Last two items I have here are a X-Acto knife. I use this if I'm cutting chipboard or if I'm using my layer guides. So this is just a handy tool to have around the house when you need to cut something. Um, I got the Fiskars one because I was having issues with the cheapos losing their blade. So I decided to upgrade. And I've liked it so far. I really like the grip of it. Uh, the blades are easily changeable just like you would with a normal. This is a letter opener. <laughs> I like letter openers because I got a lot of packages that are scrap looking stuff and I can just all day long. You can do the same thing with scissors, but I'm fancy with a letter opener. <laughs> so not necessary, fun to have. Um, this is like probably number three on the list. I would get an X-Acto knife. You can use these to cut out images in a piece of paper if you only want, like say you want to tuck something underneath this door, I could just make a quick slit with my X-Acto knife and not have to worry about fumbling with my scissors trying to get them into that little slit there. That's why I have an X-Acto knife too, is to get those detail cuts that are in the middle of the page. So number one, rotary cutter. Number two, a good pair of sewing scissors that are big. And number three, a rotary cutter. Do you have a favorite trimmer or cutting or scissors? Please let me know. I am on the hunt for better detail cutting scissors, although I did a really good job with my big pair. I might switch back to my big pair. They were very comfortable to work with, but I don't like fussy cutting. This is what fussy cutting is. It's just cutting out stuff. So let me know what your favorite trimmer is. If you have this new Trim Holtz trimmer, let me know too, because I want to know what you th your thoughts are on this guy. Um, if you have a favorite, favorite pair of scissors, let everybody know. Maybe you've got a different brand that you really like and have used for years. So... Don't forget to check out everything else about going back to the basics and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.